Hello, my name is Michelle Lanier, and it is my honor to serve as the Division Director for North Carolina State Historic Sites and Properties. Today, I'm at Horn Creek in Surrey County, and we are recording Singing on the Land, a project that connects community and offers comfort in this time of upheaval by honoring history and land and the art of musicians from across North Carolina. Today, we get to hear from Jimmy Vipperman, better known as Vip, who is a renowned fiddler from Surrey County. Enjoy. The song that I chose is uh, probably in one of the half dozen I first learned when I was young. My grandfather uh, and many other people in my family and my dad, but my grandfather was a fiddle player and a banjo player, so uh, he whistled a lot of songs. And this is one of the two or three that I recall him whistling a whole lot. And basically I've tried to model what I just did by what his whistle was because he had became a primitive Baptist preacher in his later life. and. They laid the instruments down and they only sang in a cappello in church, which really, really wasn't a cappello, but it was just no instruments. But uh, when he did that, he, uh, he still whistled his songs and my dad still carried on the tradition. He played the mandolin so uh, I could still hear the melodies that my grandpa gave me. Years ago, the only way you could learn anything from anybody is hope that they were a family member and very good because many people wouldn't share their talents with others unless they meant something to them. The TAPS program I do has been going on 18 years now, and it's a chance for kids who don't have an instrument, don't have musical people in their family like my dad. I had a band built in my dad, so. Uh, but it's an opportunity for them to, get to try an instrument out without having to buy one. Uh, it's one of the most awesome things the state has ever put out because kids are the future of this music. Wouldn't trade that program for nothing. I've been uh, the sole teacher at Mount Airy. I teach fiddle, banjo, guitar, mandolin, and bass. And uh, till I started teaching, there was no kid uh, categories at these conventions, you know, children's competitions and stuff. And, and I went to the Mount Airy Fiddler Commission and I said, hey, if you don't give these kids a competition of their own, because there's more there than ever, then this music is not going to survive, because that is the future of this music any way you look at it. And if it wasn't the future of this music, uh, you're just really not looking far enough to see it. But I can understand how older people uh, are a little jealous of young little whippersnappers like myself when I was years ago. And, uh, you know, we try really hard, and, you know, there's more practice ethics now and more teachers available now than there were when I was growing up. I had to totally learn by ear 
after I had a violin program through the Arts Council in Mount Area in 1966, then the teacher quit about a year and a half, and I found out, uh, well, my, my ears worked a whole lot better than my eyes, so I tell everybody God gives me big ears because he knew I was going to need glasses, and I can hear most anything that I play now, and I'm thankful for that, and that's what fiddling is all about, you know. <laughs>